Hello, my name is Jamie and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, today we're going to just sort of reorganize some of our files and make sure uh, that everything is correctly to scale and then get all the objects in uh, to a file together um, so we can sort of start to build the scene. Um, so first of sort of what I want to show you is uh, the sort of folder hierarchy I want to be setting up. Um, so just here I've got the folder where I've just got all the files that I've been using so far um, through the last few tutorials to uh, make the um, objects and stuff. Uh, there's a few texture files and stuff. Uh, these blend1 and blend2 files, they are uh, save points or backups um, that you can go back to just in case your main file gets uh, corrupted or something. Um, you can just rename that to dot .blend and that will open up in Blender just fine. Um, so for the uh, folder hierarchy, we're just going to set up a few folders here. Um, in the main project folder, um, I'll create a new folder and I'll just call it assets. And this is where we'll put all the sort of objects that are in the scene um, that aren't really animated or they might sort of be interacted with by the character but um, they're just sort of objects in the scene um, that don't generally um, do a lot um, and we'll have to put all the textures that go with them so basically everything here is going into the assets folder and then we'll also create a folder called characters where when we start building characters we can put them in there. We'll create another folder called renders um, so we can put in any test renders and final renders that uh, we've got into there. Um, and then in the assets folder we're going to create another folder and just call that textures and then all these texture files can go into there. Now, uh, because we've moved the textures out from the folder uh, that uh, was, uh, they were all in the folder together with the blend files. Now that they're not there, um, Blender's not going to be able to find the image files for the textures. So when I open up uh, flower.blend, you'll see here that there's no texture um, on the actual flower itself. It's all just gone purple to say there's a missing texture, uh, which is a nice way of sort of highlighting that uh, because that's not really a colour that you're going to see uh, very often um, so it's quite bright and it stands out to show you there's a missing texture there just to fix that we'll select the object go to the textures panel and under the make sure we got the texture selected and just under the source here under image after those two forward slashes type the word textures and then another forward slash hit enter and that will bring that up. Um, so we've just told Blender that everything's in the textures folder now. Um, and whilst we're, we've got this fo uh, file open, we'll just fix the scale of the flower. Uh, currently it's very tall. Um, each one of these squares is one Blender unit, uh, which in general is best used as one meter. Uh, so we've got a flower that is currently three meters high, um, which isn't very clever so um, I've been modeling sort of sloppily on purpose so I can sort of show you these fixes um, and show you a nice folder set up I'm sort of halfway through rather than worrying too much about it straight off the bat so all we need to do is select this go into object mode with the control tab and if I go into wireframe just sh uh, shift select the stem as well so we've got both of those selected and then in the front view, uh, we'll just scale it down. It's currently 3 meters tall, and I want it to be 30 centimeters. So if I scale down to 0.1, um, that should be about the right height. If I just move that up, yep. And now um, what we need to do is currently the scale is all at 0.1, uh, which is what we just set it to be. Um, but that's going to cause issues... Uh, later on if there's some um, animation and some rotation going on. Um, so to fix 
that scale being now 0.1, what we can do is go to Object, Apply, you can also get Control A, and just apply the scale. So that sets the scale as 1 without um, changing the size of anything. Uh, so now uh, that's almost set up. Last thing we need to do with the flower, um, I'll just get rid of this empty because we don't need that. And I'm just going to select everything there and hit Control G. And then that's I've turned that into a group. And that just makes it a lot easier for um, bringing the flower into uh, new files and stuff because there is an armature that's going with it. So I'll just name it uh, Flower Group. So we know it's the flower and we know that it's a group. And then we can Control W to save. And then we can close that file. Um, now we'll do the same again for the table. So I'll just bring this up here, about there. Um, and I don't need that to be there. And so now I've got a purple table in my view. So first thing, I'll fix the texture. Just go to the texture panel. I'll start start with the first texture. Um, and so I'll go back to the two slashes. And then I'll just type textures forward slash. And we've got everything back there. Uh, make sure we fix the second texture as well. Um, you can hit the home key to go to the start. Well, when you've got your cursor in the actual thing. So now we've got the spec and bump in there as well. Um, and next we need to join all these objects into one. Because um, currently we just end up importing about five or six different objects. No, actually there'll be nine different objects. And that just would be a bit tedious and a bit of a waste of time. Um, and seeing as the table's not going to be broken apart into pieces or anything, um, it's fine to just join it all together. Um, first thing we need to do is because all of the table legs are um, linked, um, any change you make to one is going to uh, propagate to others and you're not going to be able to actually join everything. Um, if we do a control J and then a control J, it's going to start uh, duplicating things and making things look weird. Um, so what we'll do is just select all of the table objects. I'll just deselect these lights. And then I'm going to hit U for make single user. And then object and data. And then now every uh, single table leg is independent of each other. So if I select this one again, scale it down, go back into object mode, you'll see none of the others have changed. So now we can just shift select all of this and that one and hit control J so now it's all one object um, and a good thing to do is name it table object um, naming your materials word is good I uh, will call this one word color and we'll call this one just wood spec bump. So then we'll um, just adjust the scale of the table. Um, instead of scaling in object mode, we can scale in edit mode. Just select everything with A a couple of times and scale that down. Um, it's currently, I'm not too sure, it's sort of, it's a meter and a half. So I actually want it to be um, 75 centimeters off the top of the ground, I think. So I'll just sort of sit it on the ground. And go Shift S, cursor to center. And then hit the uh, full stop key or the period key, depending on where you're from. Um, the key that's two buttons to the left of your right shift key. Um, and then we'll scale that down by 0.5. So now that should be about 75 centimeters. So I go 10, 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, and a bit. So it's, it's probably 80 
centimeters if you want to get a good idea of exactly how tall your object is select a single vertice at the top of it and then uh, in the transform uh, you can see not the information I was expecting to see uh, I think um, the Y value is probably what we're looking at I was expecting the Z to be about 0.75 um, but I know I've been keeping track of what I'm doing, so yeah. So this would be one meter, um, and it's less than that, so that's about right. I will just save that and then move on to the vase. Now there's no textures on the vase, so all we need to do is scale it. So I'll just tab into edit mode, and I want this to be 30 centimeters tall, so um, I've already got. Um, my cursor in the center, so I'll just take period again, Let's scale it down to be about the third of a meter. So about there, and I just tab into object and save. And now I'll open up a blank blend file, and I'll first thing I'll do is I'll save it. Uh, under the project folder at the sort of uh, bottom of everything so that I can feed into all the other folders um, I'll just call this uh, project I suppose project.blend you can call it main you can call it index you can call it anything you want um, just sort of an indication that that's the main project uh, the main file where everything's happening um, you probably have a folder set up like this for each shot that you're doing if you're doing a big uh, film um, and you'd have all the assets that you need just for that shot in the folders that are um, in the folder. So now in here we're just going to link in the um, the assets. So we'll go File, then Link. And then I can just go to Assets. I'll start with the flower. I know it's in a group. And say Flower Group. And I've got the flower in here. Next, I will link in the table, and this one's an object, and it's table object. And then I will go link and get the vase. Now, this is what happens if you don't um, name your objects properly. Um, there's only a few that it could possibly be. I know it's not the plane because that's the ground, so it's probably the circle. Um, but if you've got a um, something that's got a lot of a file that's got a lot of objects in it and you're trying to link in a single thing from it make sure you've got um, your stuff named so you know exactly what you're selecting so I'll link that in I've got the vase there now I'll just uh, grab this empty and oh, actually if we just grab the empty for now because um, that controls the flower now if you try to grab the vase and try to move it nothing's going to happen because um, that's an exact duplicate of it um, linked in um, exactly where it is in the world in its other file so what you need to do is go control alt p with it selected that's control alt p make proxy and so now the object still references the object in the other file but you can move it and position it and rotate it and scale it in this file uh, without any worries So if you need to edit the vase, just go back into its original file, adjust anything that you need to, and it should all still uh, propagate to this file, uh, which is nice for working on teams. So you can have someone working on fixing the texture or fixing some vertices in one object whilst you're putting the scene together. So now I've got one flower in the vase. Um, if I want another flower, I can Shift D to duplicate that. Um, or you can go shift A and add in a group instance of flower group and I'll just rotate that and make sure that's in the vase as well so now I've got a vase on a table with a couple of flowers and if I just move the camera in to about there um, I'll add in a plane 
you know, we'll select that light, make it a sun. Uh, with a value of 0.8. I'll just make another one quickly. And hit F12 to render. And we've got a very simple scene going on. Um, we can sort of start to build some more objects that need to go in here. Uh, we need a chair, we need a ball, and there's a couple of characters to come in as well. Um, and then we'll be good to go um, to start animating. Um, so hopefully you've sort of got an idea that you do need to be a bit organised uh, when you're doing sort of a big project in Blender. Um, you'll have to do the same thing no matter what software you're using. Um, so learning to have a nice uh, folder hierarchy is good. Um, you're more than welcome in the assets folder to have a separate folder for each asset because um, you might need to do various things with various files. Uh, for different assets, you might have um, a sculptured model that you got in one file and then a retopologized version of that in another file and that sort of stuff. Um, and all sorts of different textures, so have uh, textures for each texture folder for each uh, asset. You're more than welcome to do that. Um, for now, I think that's that's it. Make sure you've always got your scale set to 1 on your objects. Um, so that when you press N and go into the panel, you can see scale is always 1 on all of these objects. No matter what one I select, it's always 1. Uh, that's very important to remember. Um, so hopefully you've learned a little bit. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, like my Facebook and stuff like that. Um, share my videos around with your friends. Uh, the more exposure I can get, the better. Um, and next week we will, or this weekend, we'll uh, quickly model a chair and maybe look at a few other things if I've got time. Um, so until then, good luck and have fun.